starting with E4 and the Sicilian. Now what a type of system or scheme you can use when people play, say, the Sicilian against you. I've always been a great fan of the G3 lines, or the G3 systems. Bobby Fischer utilized it in many of his matches, and I do believe that it is one of the most considerable and perfect, if not to say really the best, ways to play it. Why? Well, there are many different reasons why, but, uh, you know, in particular, the, the major one, the major reason being, is because it sets up a fairly easy development, as White intends to simply play for d3, g3, go up with the bishop to the g2, and really execute his development in the most natural order. Ultimately, that will help if the knight from f3 goes out of that position, because then white can play f3, perhaps with knight h4. And then, um, you know, white could consider executing, setting up a pretty standard and yet very valuable, very powerful attack going on to the king side. So you could see that it goes beyond just the very simplistic idea of, all right, let's set the pieces up and ground them in attacking positions. There is more to white structure. There is strategy. There is a format that will help each of them pieces to support each other and really grow in, in advance against the opponent. Now what about black? I mean black besides the Sicilian he's got other ways to go about it. He's got other structures, other formations. But now as I mentioned I would really like us to do the Sicilian to begin with. So we can expect that black might play with the move of pawn to d6. Now what does that mean? How does that work? Well, if black does go with a move of pawn to d6, apparently white can make d4, which is the open Sicilian. And it's not going to be something we discuss right immediately. I'd like to talk about the d3 and g3 system um, in more specific manner. It's, it's an interesting line, it's intriguing, and it works. So let's see how does it work. After white plays with a move of pawn up to g3, Black might decide what to do, but let's suppose that uh, he will pick up to do knight of 6, and now we do d3. See that it's all about the build-up and, more importantly, the formation which White is actually going to set out, so that these pieces can do enough. There is bishop to the g2 going next move, no matter what Black does, and once the bishop becomes to the g2, White will get ready to plan along this way. What does white really want in this position? As I mentioned, the major goal is certainly the attack on the king side, but this is just the primary type of idea. It's not everything that white wants. The major goal is for white to stay with a strong center, and if any at any point black attacks it, like say for instance with the move of d5, white is more than enough to condition himself to play e5, push black's knight down and as soon as the black knight moves away we see that this pawn is going to get protected we're going to have that chance of playing h4 we're going to have or maybe even that rook e1 could be well played then the idea is all about white's knight coming down to f1 h4 knight h2 and knight g4 so you get to see this like really interesting line of development that if black eventually castles short, there's going to be a really perfect way to, um, you know, build on that, you know, just or, or arrange this extremely fast. Even in case black plays with the move opponent to the h6, there's going to be a, a, an exchange on the h6 to sacrifice, break down the position on the king's side, and keep everything going. It's a beautiful sequence and a wonderful finale as it stands. Very, very effective. Now, suppose that black plays knight to the c6 in this case. Uh, now, what's going to happen after that, in case he plays it this way? He can do it. White can play queen e2. Whether black has played d6 or d5, you may be wondering, okay, what if he doesn't lose the tempo? Sure, he can, he can choose to not lose the tempo, but either way, this pawn has advanced really far. Uh, you know, really getting inside Black's territory, into his position, cutting off most of the good squares that Black would otherwise want to have. And, you know, because moves like f6 and, and similar are being prevented or being taken away, 
there is just so much that white can bring into play. He can do a move of knight of the d2, black is going to castle, and then uh, essentially white can play with the move of knight f1. What is so great about this is that there is very little that black can do. If you want to prevent that, uh, you know, f6, for example, in case his spotter put a queen on the fc7, one of white's actual possibilities could involve the move of bishop f4, which I would find particularly effective, because now there's no f6 for quite a while. But you should never be worried in particular about the f6, because f6 just does not turn out to be uh, really all that appealing to black, if you think about it. He might want to consider it, but considering it does not mean that he's likely going to play it, that he's going to actually have that chance to, to actually make it work. Um, for instance, let's imagine that he tries to play smarter. A move like f6 may take place, but this also does not work, because then in case of this move, white can just exchange, will force black's knight to recapture, and now we've got moves like knight g5 that can happen, attacking e6 and c4. Opening up the center is going to mean a lot of problems to black. We'll have the ability to attack instantly on e5 and d5, we're getting the shot against his, um, you know, king that will be actually in a very severe danger sitting there. It's a lot of things, and all those things really culminate in, uh, in that one idea that it's like the moment white simply sets up to develop his pieces and block the pawn or anything, uh, there is going to be uh, too much of a problem. There is literally nothing that black can do to make this whole thing work. Remember that idea. I think it's a, it's a major goal to look for and consider in this position, these positions. If white gets the ability or the sequence which provides him with uh, space and a possibility to attack, he has succeeded tremendously within his opening strategy. And that's what really makes this whole thing shine. It's not just generally the idea. It is the prospect, it is the structure that actually guarantees all of this in a perfect manner. So seeing this through, we'll obviously get to ask what is black's best response, because it's a very good idea if this, we, if this happens. Let's suppose that black does not go for d5. Let's imagine that he plays something like this. What are we going to do then? In response to, de to a move like that, I think White's best goal is to try and consider really developing or arranging his pieces towards King's side as usual. A move like Knight d2 seems to fit quite well, and this position really uh, fits everything. Knight d2, supposedly Black Castles, and that's where White can play Rook u1 again. We need those pieces, no matter whether that's actually going to be for now or for a little bit later, those pieces will be necessary and very important, very powerful as they go closing in against the Black King. Sooner or later he'll play d5 or e5, he'll push up and open, and then we can take advantage of that fact. So after rook to the e1, supposedly Black now will advance on queen side. One of his ways is to play with b5, simply um, opening up the line, getting ready for to take away c4. White can then do knight f1, rook b8, and then pawn to, to up to h4 as a move. You see this? It's just wonderful. Now h4 and knight h2 doesn't actually have to necessarily happen. I mean, you can do it, but it doesn't have to happen. Knight h4 is my person personally uh, more appealing idea, or even better, something I would consider you to do is h3. This idea has been used multiple times by grandmasters, as the whole idea plan be between behind that is to make black guess what we're really going to do, and at the same time, we're certainly intending to advance both pawns, therefore getting a huge amount of space and a lot of opportunities on the king side. f4, queen c7, and g4. Just looking now at what these pawns and pieces are actually going to do shows you the power and the level of white's intention. There is a strong idea of the move knight g3 plus g5, 
There is the plan of not just going in there, but rather uh, driving out to Black Knight and giving us more, more to fight for. It's beautiful and effective at the same time. What we can expect from Black is very little. Not only because he's slow in terms of making any real threats, but also because it is quite unclear whether it's whether he can even make any uh, any attack or tactic, you know, going in this and on the queen side. While White's goal in the long run always happens to be the Black King, Black's goal on the queen side is going to be very unclear. He has a far, fairly hard time in figuring out a, even a challenge. And, and against any of White's pawns. And by the time he's still going to push up the pawns and move the rooks and, and do all of this in hope to succeed, you'd, you'd actually realize that uh, none of this really matter. So, for example, let's take a look. After that move, Billy White can do a move like, for instance, let's say, G5, driving the Black Knight out of the way. And so, for example, after that move, in case black plays, uh, let's suppose, knight to the d7, you could think uh, directly of the possibility to play here with queen to the h5. There is the move of knight to the g4, then there is going to be the move of knight to the g, uh, like knight g4. It's, it's a beautiful sequence that shows up the idea of white's pieces really reaching out and attacking out there in king's side. So there's going to be a lot of potential in doing this. Maybe black could do knight to the b6, but then white will play knight g3, knight g4. Uh, now try to remember this. Everything that white does, everything that he's intending to do, is very related to his idea of pushing and punching at the black king's side. And that's no accident. Everything we ever want is to attack the opponent's king. Now, people often go with the idea of checkmating the opponent. It doesn't often work. You have to understand that in most times, you wouldn't be successful in checkmating or trying to checkmate him. But you will be fairly successful in bringing your pieces and starting an attack, starting pressure on that given area of the board. So after knight d4 and then possibly to move a pawn up to the f5, we can very quickly realize the, uh, you know, not just the danger but the power of it all as f6 and g6 come along the way. And so this is a, a really exciting version of how you can set up an attack in this opening.